And we are back once again on Yankees Baseball Daily. Every year, Baseball America comes out with rankings of prospects within organizations. And we know the Yankees' top ten list was recently released. So joining Jack and me to talk about it is John Manuel, editor at Baseball America. He joins us via Skype. John, great to have you with us. Let me start with kind of a big picture. What goes into it? How much time for each organization ranking these prospects? Well, it depends on the organization. But for the Yankees, I've been doing this for seven years now, doing the Yankees list since 2004 so i have a good relationship with several scouts who i know who cover the yankees organization and then people inside the organization so it really starts in september we compile top prospect lists for every league and then everyone in the office who does that sends their notes to me then i go and go to people in the yankees organization and then outside the organization so i'd say i made probably eight phone calls and some of those last a couple hours mark newman usually knows that when he sees my name flash on his cell phone, it's going to take a couple of hours. And uh, same thing with some other members of the Yankee organization. So um, it's a painstaking process, but it is really the funnest thing that we do. We get to be experts and we get that kind of access that you know, most people don't get and most people don't have the time to do. So it's really a fun exercise. John, it's no surprise that Jesus Montero is at the top of that list. Give us your scouting report on what people are telling you about Montero, especially his potential future as a catcher. Well, that's the thing is, uh, you know, the hitting is obvious. I think he showed everybody in September. You know, I know you can't evaluate big leaguers necessarily off what they do in September, but he did show the swing, the strength, of the fact that this guy can hit for average and hit for power. I've compared him the last couple of years to Paul Canerco, who's a white, white guy. That profile that you don't necessarily want at first base, but he hits enough. And like Pinerco Pener was a catcher in the minor league, but he was our minor league player of the year. I think Montero is a better version of Pinerco offensively. And defensively, you still find people who defend him and think that he will hit enough to be a passable defensive catcher. And the Yankees had a Jorge Posada behind the plate. They kind of never won a gold club. If he did, it wasn't for his catching and receiving ability. It was for the leadership and those kind of things. So those intangibles, the leadership qualities, if Montero shows those, then I think he will get enough reps behind the plate to catch 40, 50 times a year. But that onslaught of information in today's Major League Baseball, that's really the next step for Montero to digest the binder, to digest the scouting reports, and to help prepare pitchers to succeed. All right, so let's give Yankees fans a look at that top ten list that you compiled. And as Jack mentioned, it starts with Jesus Montero, Manny Banuelos, and Della Batances, two and three. Gary Sanchez, the catcher at four. Mason Williams, Dante Bichette, Ravel Santana, Austin Romine, J.R. Murphy, and Slade Heathcotton. I've got another question about catching, so you can explain this to Yankees fans who might look at that, John, and say, well, I'm more familiar with Austin Romine as a catcher. Why is Gary Sanchez at four and, let's say, Romine at eight? How can you explain that? If Gary Sanchez can flat out rake, he really can hit. And offensively, he's more of actually a pure hitter than Jesus Montero. And I think there are going to be some people in the organization who would say he's going to have that kind of offensive ceiling. Uh, you know, 17 home runs in the South Atlantic League for any 18-year-old is impressive. And you put into it that he's a catcher and that he did it in two-thirds of a season. And there are makeup issues and maturity issues with Gary Sanchez. He was suspended during the year. You know, the, the story that we had on him is that his receiving is pretty rough and that he did not like calling breaking balls from pitchers because he didn't have confidence in catching them. Uh, that's an issue best addressed in the South Atlantic League. You know, let's get that out of his system now in A-ball before it goes up to the upper level. So he has a long way to go, but his offensive ceiling is really significant. And that's not something you can say about Austin Romine. We've been talking about Romine's power potential for several years. He just hasn't really delivered on it. He's a very streaky offensive player. So right now he's more of like a second division regular or backup option as opposed to a guy who offensively in Sanchez, it really has a chance to be a star. But you know, Sanchez is much further away from his ceiling than, than Romine is. John, right between Montero and Sanchez, number two and three, Banuelos and Batances, it's hard to separate these guys. They were teammates last year, and both of them struggled with their fastball command. A lot of walks on the ledger. What are your thoughts on those two pitchers? I think you nailed the biggest question. And uh, I just was talking to someone this week about Banuelos, and I think that really the, his confidence this year in himself seemed to dip a little bit. And I think it was very difficult for him to deal with all the hype in spring training, and I think he was trying to live up to that. Uh, the rest of the season because I haven't really gotten a consistent answer from anyone inside or outside the system about why he struggled with his command. He has a pretty good delivery, a pretty sound delivery. His arm action is pretty clean, 
Um, he just rushed himself a little bit this year at times. His mechanic got out of whack. He tried to overcompensate. It was a lot of different little things. I think Benuelos is clearly the better prospect. Uh, last year we had it reversed. This year I think, you know, you take a left-hander who's younger and who has three pitches. Uh, they're all above average at times. I think Benuelos gets the, the edge over Batanzas. But and Batanzas has his supporters inside and outside the organization. And I talked to a scout who who loves Dylan Batanzas, has for since he was in high school and really believes this guy's a, a front-line starter, kind of an A.J. Burnett kind of guy with tantalizing stuff, no-hit stuff. Uh, to me, his size, uh, athleticism, body control, I don't think he's ever going to be a consistent strike thrower. And 2010 really looks like the statistical outlier for him where his walks per nine were two and a half per nine innings. The rest of his career has been five, and that's really what he's always going to fight is that fastball command. Just real quick question, John, we'll let you go. Do you think Batances and Banuelos can both have an impact on this upcoming season at the major league level? I think Banuelos is less likely to have the impact this year, but Tances is a little bit, I think, ahead of him. And on the 40-man roster already, he's already had that big league time. But Banuelos' ceiling, to me, is a lot better than Batances. All right, John Manuel via Skype, thanks for the time. Appreciate it.